gathered together today to honor our mother of perpetual health and seek her intercession on our behalf, we pray. Oh God, as a true mother, you sacrifice your own needs, wants, and dreams for our benefit by submitting yourself to God's will and giving birth to our Savior. As you hung her upon the cross, he gifted you to us as our mother. And as your son, may you inspire your children to likewise be self-sacrificing rather than self-serving, to give ourselves in loving service to your sisters and brothers. Mary, you were chosen to be the mother of the Son of God. To protect him, you left home and family and became an immigrant in a foreign land. Protect all those parents who make the same hard choice today. Give us the compassion to reach out to those mothers and fathers who have given up home, family, and heritage for the sake of their children. May our nation be receptive to the dispossessed, the poor, and the suffering children of the world. Keep us always mindful that we are the children of God and our Redeemer died to save all people. Mary, as you rejoiced over the gift of your own son, you wept for all those who lost sons in the slaughter of the innocents. You cried out for all those defenseless children whose lives were taken by those motivated out of fear and self-concern. Mother of perpetual health, protect all innocent life, especially in the defenseless. Still in your children, sanctity for all life. Assure those who have been blessed with the gift of life and the world, that they are not alone, and that their child is a gift from God. Inspire us to care for all children, born and unborn, especially those who need a mother's love and protection. May we, your children, seek to feed the hungry, clothe the naked, heal the sick, and comfort the afflicted. Mary, from the moment the angel Gabriel first appeared to you, until you were assumed into heaven, you pondered everything in your heart and reflected upon its meaning. That's your help. Help us to be open to the word of the Lord. May the word be planted upon our hearts, and may we spend our lives meditating upon its meaning, and strive each day to proclaim the gospel in word and deed. Mary, when your friends at Cana were in need, when they had run out of wine and joy, you stepped in and fled to the one you knew had a blessing, the one who could restore their joy. You us to trust your son, to trust your son to do what was right, and told the steward to simply do whatever Jesus told him. May we live lives of faith and always turn to your son and be comforted that he can heal our ills, move our minds, fix our problems, and restore our joy. Let us... Mary, as, the, as Jesus embraced his public ministry and went forth to proclaim the good news, you became his first disciple and spent your life in his service. Petro Hall, we turn to you in our model of disciples. Inspire us to humbly follow the Good Shepherd. May we spend our lives in loving and serving our God. As disciples, may we always seek to do the will of God and mold our lives into the likeness of your Son and our Lord Jesus. Mary, you wept at the foot of the cross as a sword of sorrow pierced your heart. You had to witness your Son suffer the cruel and merciless death penalty of the cross. Mother Mary be your constant help. May she be a true example to all of us of what it means to be a disciple of Jesus Christ by surrendering our lives to the will of God. May the blessings of Almighty God the Father, the Son, 
and the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Let us pray. Look upon us, O God, creator and ruler of all things, that we may feel the working of your mercy. Grant that we may serve you with all our heart. We pray to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, this saying is trustworthy. Whoever aspires to the office of bishop deserves a noble task. Therefore, a bishop must be irreproachable, married only once, temperate, self-controlled, decent, hospitable, able to teach, not a drunkard, not aggressive, but gentle. Not contentious, not a lover of money. He must manage his own household well, keeping his children under control with perfect dignity. For if a man does not know how to manage his own household, how can he take care of the church of God? He should not be a recent convert so that he may not become conceited and thus incur the devil's punishment. He must also have a good reputation among the outsiders so that he may not fall into disgrace, the devil's trap. Similarly, deacons must be dignified, not deceitful, not addicted to drink, not greedy for sordid gain, holding fast to the mystery of the faith with a clear conscience. Moreover, they should be tested first. Then, if there is nothing against them, let them serve as deacons. Women, similarly, should be dignified, not slanderous, but temperate and faithful in everything. Deacons may be married only once and must manage their children and their households well. Thus, those who serve well as deacons gain good standing and much confidence in their faith in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm, I will walk with blameless heart. I will walk with blameless heart. Of mercy and judgment I will sing to you, O Lord. I will sing praise. I will persevere in the way of integrity. When will you come to me? I will walk with blameless heart. I will walk with blameless heart within my house. I will not set before my eyes any eggs based thing. I will walk with blameless heart. Whoever slanders his neighbor in secret, and in secret, him will I destroy. The man of haunty eyes and puffed up heart, I will not endure. I will walk with blameless heart. My eyes are upon the faithful of the land, they that may dwell with me. He who walks in the way of integrity shall be in my service. I will walk with blameless heart. with you. 
Spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Our Gospel this morning is taken from chapter 7, beginning at verse 11. Jesus journeyed to a city called Nain, and his disciples and a large crowd accompanied him. As he drew near to the gate of the city, a man who had died was being carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow. A large crowd from the city was with her. When the Lord saw her, he was moved with pity for her and said to her, do not weep. He stepped forward, touched the coffin, and the bearers halted. And he said, young man, I tell you, arise. The dead man sat up and began to speak. Jesus gave him to his mother. Fear seized them all, and they glorified God, exclaiming, A great prophet has arisen in our midst, and God has visited his people. The report about him spread through the whole of Judea in all the surrounding region. My brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Our gospel is one of those gospels that makes you step back and say, wow. <laughs> you know, and people say, I wonder what that would have been like to be in that crowd there and right there in Nazareth and Jerusalem. And I said, it would be similar to if someone came in today who every one of you have known from the time you were children, who had polio when he was a child, and was there in a wheelchair and for whatever reason the Holy Spirit moved me you know and I went over laid hands on him be healed and he got up out of the wheelchair <laughs> perfectly healthy and then I told everybody now when you go home don't tell anybody just praise God and don't say anything by the time I left church and got back over to the rectory, all of St. Louis would know. <laughs> you know, and, but what becomes powerful here is we see that whole understanding of compassion. You know, this is the only child. And Jesus' compassion helps us to understand what Mary constantly tells us you don't need to fear my son see I, I know my child he's full of mercy he's full of love because I loved him you know, and yeah we also know Jesus is also a just Jesus you know, th did he get angry sure he did he cleaned out the temple from the money changers you know, and yet Mary constantly helps us to understand, open our heart, and just allow the power of his love to fill us. You know, I don't need to tell God how to do the miracles. He's been God a really long time. <laughs> and he's very good at being God. And Jesus knows how to heal and what is the best healing for us. Because you know, sometimes, praise God, we human beings, God bless our soul, we say, Lord, I, I need a healing, uh, and I, I don't mean to rush you or tell you what to do, but I, I got a lot of things on my calendar today. If you could uh, take care of this uh, next 10 minutes. <laughs> and by the way, uh, if it's all right to, could you heal me this particular way? And it's like, well, Jesus will heal us, but he'll heal us and give us what we need. And Mary helps us to understand that. She understood, especially when we just sit and think about the prayers we pray. Yeah, she stood there by the cross. There wasn't a moment during this journey to the cross that Mary did not have the ability to exercise her right as a mother and say, enough is enough, go tell the Father in heaven, uh, we're going to stop here. But she didn't. 
She understood the plan of salvation. She knew what was going to happen, maybe not exactly when, but she knew. And so the pain and the suffering was equal to what Jesus suffered on the cross. She had to watch her child die, and that had to be all right. You know, if any of you have ever had child kids who've gone into the military, you know, it, it's a mom and dad's privilege to worry. <laughs> it don't matter what the child tells you, you have a mom and a dad's right to worry. So I always tell young people, don't even try, because <laughs> you're going to do the same thing when you have children. <laughs> you know, and there were times, you know, and I remember those times. I was going to disappear for a while. And after a while, my parents knew not, to, when I tell them I'm going to be gone for a while, they knew don't ask. Because yes, it's dangerous. And yes, there's a real possibility I'm not walking back through this door. And that had to be all right. And so Mary tells us, you trust my son. There is nothing that his love cannot conquer in our lives. There is nothing that his love cannot empower in our lives. And if you have any questions, go just talk to my mom. She'll help you understand. And so we thank Mother Mary. We thank the Lord. Because one more time, through the intercession of Mary, our mother of perpetual health, we know this day God has visited his people. Let us pray. Let us present our petitions. We pray for the church. May she always be a voice of justice in the world, defending those who stand in harm's way. We pray. We pray for our leaders, for Pope Francis, our Archbishop Mitchell, all the leaders of the church and state. May they be true servants of God's people, we pray. We pray for peace. May the hostility that exists between your children cease, Lord. May you dispel our fears and prejudices and open our eyes to your presence dwelling within each of us. We pray. We pray for all children. May your mother and our mother Mary be a constant help and protection for all the children of the world, born and unborn. May we be worthy examples for our children to follow in living the gospel of love and peace. We pray. We pray for the oppressed. Send us, Lord as you sent your son Alphonsus, as your ambassador to serve and defend the poor and most abandoned. We pray. We pray for the sick. We pray that you will place your healing hands upon all who are sick, healing of body, mind, and soul, especially. We pray. We pray for all those who have died. We prepare a place in your kingdom for our beloved and comfort those who mourn their passing. We pray also especially for the brother of our sister Joyce Jones Donald, who died of a heart attack this past week. We pray. See for us, Lord. Let us present our own personal petitions for the intercession of our mother of perpetual health. We pray. Heavenly Father, we give thanks and praise you for you hear us, to bring healing through our Mother Mary. And so as we continue to praise you for your gift and your love, we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. 
Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. With your goodness, we have received this wine we offer. Fruit of the vine, the work of human hands. It'll become for us our spiritual thing. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that this sacrifice may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Look with favor on our supplications, Lord, and in your kindness accept these, your servants' offerings, that what each has offered to the honor of your name may serve the salvation of all. We pray to Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and ever-living God. For just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through him, with great goodness, you formed it anew. And so it is right that all your creatures serve you, all the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore we too extol you with all the angels, as in joyful celebration we proclaim. sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving you thanks and praise, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you and you, this is my body, which will be given up to you. In the same way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, again giving you thanks and praise, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the 
memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Mitchell, our Archbishop, and all the clergy and people everywhere. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Apostle, the martyrs, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you, your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in in unity with the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever.
Let us pray. Grant us your church, Lord, that strengthened by the power of this sacrament, that we may eagerly walk in the pathways of the gospel until we reach the blessed vision of peace, which our Virgin Mary, Mother of Perpetual Help, already enjoys with eternal glory. We pray to Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.